You're listening to the Live Life Loved podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill at NicoleBerryhill.com. Your love never changes 
It's time for the Live Life Loved podcast with internationally renowned author and speaker, Dr. Nicole Berryhill. She asks us the question, what if I tell you it's all so much better than we were led to believe? Her message of good news, practical hope and assured victory is a thirst quenching relief in today's culture. You do not have to live your life in fear. You can truly and confidently live life loved. And now I give you Dr. Nicole Berryhill, our host of the Live Life Loved podcast. Hey, friend, welcome back. I'm so glad you're here. Some of you have known me for decades, and I'm so glad to know you're still here. For my listeners who may be new to the show, I'd like to welcome you into this space. The Live Life Love podcast is all about finding the gold in everyday life. I'm here to remind you that you're a precious soul created by, for, and in love. The busyness of just daily life can really distract us from the core of who we are and why we're here. It's my mission to spend just a little time with you each week to bring you a little bit of peace in the storm where we can come together to think about what we're thinking about and recalibrate our minds to better focus on living this life we all share in love. Today's episode marks a bit of a change in format for the show that I feel really good about. I hope you enjoy it and it serves you well. I'm beginning with a series covering something I've been wrestling with for over 30 years. Maybe not wrestling, maybe more digesting. To be honest, I've been struggling with how to convey this information in a way that communicates the many layers of meaning of love, truth, consolation, rapture, peace, wholeness, welcoming, inclusion, and just so very, very much more. It's taken me over 30 years to mentally and spiritually process what's happened to me. And frankly, I'm still unpacking those experiences to this day. I've struggled so much with processing everything in a communicable way and have found our language woefully lacking. I realize that what I'm about to share will cost me a hefty amount of professional credibility in certain circles, and that's okay. I'm at peace with my decision. I am, at this point, no longer serving any institution. I've been a minister for nearly a quarter of a century now, having served other ministers all over the globe. From this point forward, it's just me sharing my experience with the divine with you my real tangible experience. It is what it is. Take my words as you will. I'm whole with this. Now, I've experienced three separate near-death experiences, or what is often referred to as NDEs. One in the den of the home I grew up in during my late teens. One in the hospital during the birth of my twins in my early 30s. And one in my home during my late 40s. These encounters with the other side have radically changed my relationship with God and my fellow humans. I'm going to do my best to share those experiences with you in this series. My prayer is that my story serves your soul well. I've only shared parts of my story with a small gathering of my closest brothers and sisters in ministry at a conference several years ago. It was well over three decades ago when I first experienced the first of the miracles that obliterated all of my cognitive dichotomy as it relates to my faith. I should probably inject a little background to help put that idea into context. I've attended church my whole life. My grandpa was a Methodist minister. Everyone just called him the preacher. (laughs) 
So I went to summer Bible school, either out at my grandmother's place at their church or at our local church every summer. I was pretty much at church every time the doors were open as I grew up. I was an acolyte during the services. I worked in the nursery. I was active in my local youth group and went on to serve as president of our church's UMYF group, which is the United Methodist Youth Fellowship. I went on to become a Christian counselor, serving people in their deepest times of need for basically the rest of my life. In that time, I founded what is now the broadest reaching non-denominational ministry association for independent fellowships with members on every inhabitable continent on earth and later the association seminary to provide the educational foundation and support those independent ministers would need to thrive in the real world. I passed those torches of leadership into loving and capable hands back in 2016 to pursue other endeavors. But I can easily say that connecting those souls and working to empower them in what was then a very closed field of service is easily one of my greatest journeys second only to being the mom of my four incredible daughters. And I'm super proud of what we all accomplished together. Each and every minister I had the privilege to work with during that magical time are, to this day, considered some of my closest friends. I share all of that to frame what I'll be sharing with you in this series. It has taken me all this time to unpack, see clearly, and fully digest my experiences with what most would refer to as the afterlife and the following unveilings to arrive here. There have been ongoing, what I call knowing downloads that I cannot explain ever since. I've been essentially overwhelmed trying to unpack even the smallest segment of these experiences. And being a psychological researcher focused on neurotheology for essentially the last decade, working to settle the juxtaposition between what I experienced firsthand and what I have been taught and lived literally my entire life. Make no mistake, God is very real. He's amazing. You are intrinsically a part of Him in all you do, on purpose. You are intimately loved in a way that saturates the entirety of the universe. Our language is simply not adequate to explain what I now know, but I'm here to really give it my best effort because I absolutely know the world needs to hear it. I'll do my very best to communicate the unbelievably good news that many allude to but few truly understand in its divine fullness. I have indeed, quote, crossed over on three separate occasions in my life here on earth. I'll do my very best to share my full experiences with you to help you see and understand the glory that I have seen. Ultimately, I'm changed, period. Our faith is not for nothing. Call me a weirdo or maybe a blasphemer for breaking away from certain dogmas as a result of what I've experienced firsthand, or frankly, call me whatever you want. I know what I know. I feel like I've unpacked it enough for myself over these many years to be able to finally share as much as I'm able in a real way. Now, when I say that my experience have multiple and infinite layers of meaning that have taken me nearly 30 years to get my head around. Uh, I mean exactly that. <laughs> I'm still regularly experiencing more revelations of meaning and context as I continue to grow spiritually. One thing I say often is that I no longer have faith per se. I have proof, at least enough proof for me. I want you to have the same blessed assurance that I have in my bones. I'm bold in his heart, and you should be too. I'll start here with my first experience. In my late teens and early 20s, I had pretty severe hypoglycemia, which is chronically low blood sugar. I had to micromanage what and how often I ate during the day. If I overslept or got busy with a task and forgot to eat, I would, I would feel 
tingly or dizzy and vertigo. And often I would experience audio symptoms, like everything sounded as if I were listening through a muffled tube. And in the worst events, I would faint or pass out. There were several times when my mom would just randomly find me laying at the bottom of the stairs or just in a haze. I had to keep sugar tablets or pieces of hard candy on me at all times for emergencies. It's maybe best understood as the opposite of diabetes, but has very similar symptoms. I recall one three-hour glucose tolerance test I had to take during that time. My blood glucose level dipped into the low 40s. If you're in the medical field or are just familiar with those numbers, that will tell you exactly how tightly I had to manage my eating throughout the day to keep my sugar up. On this particular day, I had come home from work around 2 p.m. and our area was under a tornado watch. Here in North Alabama, that is a regular occurrence during certain times of the year, and we're well educated from a young age on what precautions we should take to stay safe. Mainly, we go to the safest room in the house and just wait it out. (laughs) Touchdowns are super rare, but they do happen. So heading to the den at our house and turning on the weather coverage was basically an ingrained response. I pulled into the driveway as I heard the warning on the car radio. It was looking especially dark and stormy outside and the rain had just begun. So I walked in through the carport door. Our house was a standard 1970s split level. So coming in from the carport put you in the kitchen on the middle floor of the house. About this time, the tornado warning sirens began to go off. So I just did what we do. I headed downstairs to the den and turned on the TV, which showed the tornadic movement very close to our area. Now our den was pretty large and most of it had that shaggy dark brown carpet that so many homes did back then. There was maybe a 10 by 15 foot recess that used to be my playroom growing up but we'd knocked out that wall and hadn't yet carpeted that area so it was basically just a bare cement floor with a throw rug on it at this point. This was by far the safest spot in the house as it sort of tucked partially under the middle floor above. This is where I settled down to wait things out. I was the only one at home until my mom got off work and picked up my sister from her after school program, so I was a little nervous. Hopefully this thing would just pass on over and that would be that. There were no cell phones back then, so all one could do was just wait it out. So the last I'd eaten that day was around 10 a.m. Given the weather situation, I just walked in through the kitchen and kept on going to the den. There was so much else going on, it literally didn't occur to me to grab a bite to eat on my way through. I just got comfortable sitting Indian style on the floor in the area that used to be my playroom as a child and watched the weather on our big TV across the room. The tornado's sirens began to go off a second time as yet another funnel cloud was forming in our area. I started to feel a little tired after a while, so I took off my jacket and folded it over as a pillow to lay on my side and get more comfortable. There were plenty of throw pillows on the couch across the room, but like I said, I felt very tired and just didn't want to get up. I figured this would all be over in a few minutes anyway. Eventually, I just closed my eyes to chill out for what I thought would be just a little bit until everything calmed down. I don't know how much time passed between closing my eyes and what happened next. I was basically floated out of my body and I could see myself laying on the floor. I would say I was pulled out of my body, but it wasn't as forceful as that. Maybe rising is a better word. So I slowly rose to the ceiling through the living room directly above that section of the den and through the roof into the sky. Even though there was severe weather going on, the sky was actually a gorgeous blue with fluffy clouds scattered about. I kept rising at what I felt like was increasing speed. I felt like I was flying upward and to a slight angle. The sky got brighter and more brilliant as I rose. At some point, I realized my granny My great-grandmother, who passed when I was around five years old, was holding my hand. 
oh my goodness, the warmth and love just filled me up with a familiarity and comfort I can't really even articulate. I just soaked her in, and we were all smiles, the both of us. We were communicating to each other back and forth, I guess telepathically, but not in English or any language. It was more like communicating emotions to each other. The next thing I remember is standing in a meadow with her and she moved my hand in hers forward. So I was looking down at our hands intertwined as she placed my hand in someone else's hand. And with a soft squeeze of my hand, she was gone from my side, but I could still feel her presence. My hand was in someone else's hand, and I looked up to see who this person was. I instantly felt that we'd had a very long connection, so this wasn't an alarming situation, but a super cozy one. He was quite a bit taller than me, maybe six and a half feet or more. When I looked into his eyes, I instantly knew this was Jesus. Or better stated, I knew this was the God of the universe presenting himself to me visually as who I would recognize as Jesus. In this moment, they were one in the same. I was enraptured with a love I, to this day, can't really describe. I was home. I was with my soul's dad. We walked together in this meadow for what seemed like forever, talking back and forth in that same telepathic emotional language. It was utter bliss. I could feel and communicate with many other souls around us, and they were also known very intimately to me. My feeling was that they were lifelong friends and other members of my family who I had not met on earth but felt as if we'd spent an eternity together. I could also feel that even the air was alive, and everything around us was alive. Everything, and I mean everything, was singing the most incredible music all the time. Music I can vaguely compare to a hive of bees buzzing, but larger and incredibly, incredibly beautiful and peaceful and uplifting and joyous. Everything around us was gorgeous. There were flowers with colors we don't even have names for here. The trees around us were a million shades of the most incredible greens. As a former art student whose medium of choice for many years was oil on canvas, I'm telling you for a fact these colors don't exist here. And those colors were alive. During this whole time I was there, I continually realized that I just knew things. Things I would have no other way of knowing. Too much to try to share here all at once, so I'll probably start a separate series once I've communicated my experiences with you in this series. Some of these knowings are actually now coming into scientific confirmation through the field of quantum physics. I know, it's really weird. (laughs) So anyway, we walked and talked for a very long time. The temperature was perfect. The light was a gorgeous warm glow absolutely everywhere. And the light was literally alive and all encompassing and made of love. The best I can describe the sensation of being in that light is if you imagine falling into a giant pool of warm honey. It's like swimming in a giant hug, but you're living there and the hug is everywhere and everything. As we were spending this wonderful time together, at one point I heard a muffled call from very far behind me that said, Nikki. This was my family's nickname for me growing up, but I didn't realize that in the moment. I didn't have any emotional connection to the word, which is weird. I just knew it was being called out to me specifically. That only makes sense when you realize I'd been there for what felt like years speaking in our telepathic emotional language. 
So I felt emotionally the intention of the word was for me, but I had no understanding of the word itself. Again, weird, I know. <laughs> I heard the muffled call behind me a couple more times, and then Jesus turned to me and picked up my other hand to hold in his hand, and he looked me, he looked me in the eyes, and he said, My love, it's time for you to go back now. I literally said, go back where? <laughs> he replied with, you need to go back now. You still have much to do. I'll be with you the whole way. Don't worry. And then he let go of my hands. Instantly, I felt I was being pulled backwards and the muffled calls of Nikki, Nikki, wake up, got more and more clear. And then I felt like a boulder back into my body. It was kind of painful. I was freezing on the cold floor laying on my back. This woman was shaking my shoulder saying, Nikki, Nikki, wake up. I opened my eyes and I didn't immediately recognize her and didn't understand what her words meant. She said several sentences before I began to understand English again and recognized that she was my mom. She had orange juice and I believe some hard candy and I sipped on the juice and she had me put the candy under my tongue. Slowly, I began to warm up and come to, as they say. Eventually, I told her about my experience later that evening. We did the math together and this whole experience that felt like literally years to me started around the time I closed my eyes, maybe 2.30 that afternoon until she got home at nearly 6.00. I was around 17 or 18-ish, I think, when this happened, and it took me a really long time to process it. This was the late 80s, and there weren't many resources to seek out about this kind of thing. There was no internet, and I found almost nothing at the library. I didn't even know there was a word for it. I handled it like most of us Gen Xers did back in the day. I just, I just put it in the back of my mind and went on with life. But in my quiet moments, I always pondered the whole experience. It was very real. And I explored the memories and sought out their meaning. Every now and then, even to this day, I'll see or hear some random thing that frankly makes me cry and long for home that home, our real home. But I live here and I have a life here to live and people to love. Since that day back in my teens, I've always felt that I was walking through this life with one leg on earth and one leg in eternity. I haven't always processed it well <laughs> either, but I've done my best with what I had available to me at the time. I feel incredibly blessed that I've had two additional experiences since then in my life. And I'll share the second experience with you that happened during the birth of my twins in the next episode. I hope to see you there. Thank you for tuning in. You've been listening to the Live Life Loved podcast with Dr. Nicole Berryhill. Be sure to subscribe, like, and share over your social media to help spread the love. Be sure to sign up for the free Live Life Loved newsletter today at nicoleberryhill.com for bonus weekly content to help you live your life loved.